स्किन की विजिबल यस सर स्किन विजिबल अपनी स्टार्ट करो शुड आई कंटिन्यू या या प्लीज प्रोसीड আমি তো আপনার ভয়েস ক্লিয়ার শুনতে পাচ্ছি না ও আচ্ছা আমি তো স্পষ্ট শুনতেছি আপনার কথা বা আচ্ছা তাহলে কি আমি শুরু করব কিনা জি জি কাইন্ডলি কেউ একজন কমেন্ট করে জানান যে স্পষ্ট কিনা কথা শোনা যাচ্ছে কিনা হ্যাঁ আমি আপনার কথা শুনতে পাচ্ছি না বলেন আমি ফেসবুকে যারা দেখছেন সবাইকে একটু রিকোয়েস্ট করব আপনারা কেউ একজন কমেন্ট করে জানান যে কথা শোনা যাচ্ছে কিনা Okay, so I am going to the talk. Today I will talk on eyelids. Sir, sound clear. Only key comment could say sound clear. Last letter is actually not going to be. so <clears throat> first look at the sum applied anatomy about eyelid among the applied anatomy the most important thing that is the eyelid margin so this is the eyelid margin if you consider the eyelid margin it has two border this is the anterior border and this is the posterior border so this is the anterior border and this is the posterior border and the space between the anterior border and the posterior border it is the gray line so gray line is a very important surgical landmark in the eyelid margin why because anterior to the gray line the structures the things are eyelashes anterior to the gray line there are eyelashes how many eyelashes two to three row of eyelashes and posterior to the gray line there is opening of the mevovian gland this is the mevovian gland each mevovian gland has one duct and one opening so these are the opening of the mevovian gland or orifices of the mevovian gland so this is very important why important because in mcq you may may get a questions what are the structure anterior to the gray line and what are the things posterior to the gray line so anterior to the gray line is eyelashes and posterior to the gray line is the opening or orifices of the mevovian gland so that's why gray line is very important but another surgical importance of the gray line is if you wants to divide the eyelid into two lamellae and that is the important landmarks the gray line if you give an incision along with the gray line then introduce a scissor then you can easily divide the eyelids into two lamellae anterior and posterior lamellae onoshmoy eta bhai bhate jiggesh kore if you wants to divide the eyelid into two lamellae through which you can divide it this is the gray line so 
eyelid margin er sobche important hocche you may get a mcq one mcq question over from over here one is entry to the gray line there are eyelashes and posterior to the gray line there is the opening or orifices of the mammalian gland and you can split the eyelid into the anterior and posterior lamellae through the gray line now come to the eyelashes these eyelashes in arrange arrange in two to three rows in upper lid there are 100 to 115 number and they are directed upwards forwards and backwards in the lower eyelids just half of the upper eyelids upper eyelid got us 100 to 150 and in the lower eyelids 50 to 75 and what is palpebral fissure it is the space between the upper and lower lid margin and the height of this palpebral fissure is around 10 to 11 mm and it is more in case of female so among this all if i can repeat the most important thing is the eyelid margin and in the eyelid margin the most important thing is entry to the gray line there is eyelash and posterior to the gray line there is the opening of the mammalian gland these two things is very important and now come to the structures of the eyelid the structure of the eyelid if you consider from anterior to posterior and these are skin the skin of the eyelid is the thinnest skin of the body then next to the skin is the subcutaneous tissue this subcutaneous tissue they contain loose areal tissue and that is why the any inflammation or infection the eyelids easily get swollen এটা খুব তাড়াতাড়ি সোয়েলেন হয়ে যায় বিকজ অফ দা ইট কন্টেইনস দা লুজ এরিওলার টিস্যু এন্ড নেক্সট টু সাবকোনেট টিস্যু ইজ দা এস্টাটেড মাসলস এন্ড হোয়াট আর দা এস্টাটেড মাসলস দে আর দা অরবিকুলারিস ওকুলি মাসলস অফ রিওলন এন্ড এলপিএস এন্ড নেক্সট টু নেক্সট টু দা এস্টাটেড মাসল সাব কানেক্টিভ মাস সাব মাসকুলার কানেক্টিভ টিস্যু এন্ড দিস ইজ ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট হোয়াই বিকজ ইন দিস স্পেস সাব মাসকুলার area they contain the nerves and blood vessels so why it is important because in any lead surgery under local anesthesia we infiltrate anesthetic agents within the submuscular layer so if you consider from anterior to posterior first skin then subcutaneous tissue then muscle layer then submuscular tissue and submuscular tissue is very important for injecting infiltrating anesthetic agents because these submuscular layer they contain the nerve flexors so that's why in the viva sometimes it is asked in which layer you will inject infiltrating anesthetic agents your answer will be in the submuscular layer why because the nerve flexors are situated within the submuscular layer and next to the submuscular layer is the fibrous layer these fibrous layer two parts one is orbital septum and the rest are surface you can see over here this is the orbital septum and this is the tarsal plane so the difference between the orbital septum and the tarsus only difference is the orbital septum is thin and the the tarsus is very thick and within the tarsus there are some gland and these glands are the mammalian gland so both septum and tarsus they are the fibrous layer but difference is the septum is thin and the tarsus is thick and below the fibrous layer there is a non estrated muscles this is molar muscles and below the non estrated muscle that is conjunctiva this is the conjunctiva so the part of the conjunctiva that attaches to the tarsus it is called tarsal conjunctiva the part of the conjunctiva that attaches to the tarsus it is called tarsal conjunctiva it is also called palpebral conjunctiva so if you consider the structures of the eyelid again from skin then subcutaneous tissue then muscle then submuscular tissue the submuscular layer is very important as the nerve flexors are remain within this submuscular layer and below the submuscular layer is the fibrous layer it is very important because it is it is in the thin part is the orbital septum and thick part is the tarsus as we mentioned the last and last lecture any infections confined within the septum 
that is called preceptor cellulitis. But if infective focus they cross the septum, then easily they can invade the conjunctiva and they can get access into the orbit. And if, if infective focus they cross the septum and get access into the orbit, that is called orbital cellulitis. But if it is confined to the orbital septum, it is called preceptor cellulitis. Now come to the eyelid gland. This is very important. There are so many glands. Among these all, the most important is the mammalian gland. And these mammalian glands, they are located in the tarsal plate. They are located in the tarsal plate, not in the orbital septum, in the tarsal plate. So there are some gland, mammalian gland, gland of gyes, and glands of mole. Among these all, the most important is the mammalian gland. And these mammalian glands, they are the modified sebaceous gland. They are sebaceous gland. So their contents are sebum. Mm. And the number of the mammalian gland, they are 30 to 40 in upper tarsus and 20 to 30 in the lower tarsus. But the most important thing is they, these glands are parallel to each other. This is very important. These glands are parallel to each other. That's why if you give me incision, Vertically, it will cause less damage. But if you give a horizontal incision, it will give more damage to the other mammalian ducts. Uh, as because these mammalian gland, they are oriented vertically. And these gland, they have duct. Each gland has one duct. And each duct, they open in the posterior border of the eyelids. And the glands of gyes also there. And they are the modified sebaceous gland and some glands of mole, they are modified sweet gland. Now come to the collagen or mammalian cyst. It is very important because it, you can get questions in the written viva ospi. In all, uh, it is very common. What is collagen? It is a chronic lipogalonometrous inflammations of the mammalian gland. So it is a chronic inflammation of the mammalian gland. Chronic inflammations. And if you do the histopathology, you will get lipid tissue, granulometers, that is, you will get giant cells. So, and what is the pathogenesis, how it occurs? If any inflammation is the lead margin, any inflammation, whatever may be the cause, it may be due to seborrheic dermatitis, or it may be due to acne rosacea, whatever it is. If there is an inflammation in the lead margin, there is an obstruction in the mammalian ducts. You can see over here. If there is an obstruction in the mammalian duct, then what will happen? The gland content. What are the gland content? The sebum. The sebum, they cannot come out. There are various now. So what will happen? There will be accumulation of sebum within the gland. So the gland will be gradually increase in size, increase in size. When cross the limit, they, there will be, this gland will be burst and the contents will come out into the surrounding structures. When this content, this sebum, will come out into the surrounding structure, they will initiate inflammations, chronic inflammation. These chronic inflammations of the mammalian gland is called collagen. So collagen is the chronic inflammations of the mammalian gland, and it occurs due to the obstruction of the duct of mammalian duct. And why there is obstruction? This obstruction is occurs due to the inflammation of the lead margin. So collagen is a chronic, it is not acute condition, it is a chronic condition. It is inflammation, it is not infection. And it is the inflammation of the mammalian gland. If you simply say it is a chronic inflammation of the mammalian gland, your definition also correct. And now what are the clinical features? It is a non-tender, it is a painless. This is the most important. Why non-tender? Because it is a chronic inflammation, it is not a acute condition. And then second thing, the overlying skin is, you can see over here, it's healthy. The overlying skin is, is not inflamed. Why not inflamed? Because it is not a acute condition. It is a chronic condition, chronic inflammation. That's why overlying skin is healthy. And this nodule is within the tarsal plane. And form inconsistency. Why form inconsistency? It is not soft, it is form. Why form? Because it is a chronic inflammation. It is, there is a no infection. There is a no abscess. 
that's a forming process. And a from the late margin, you see, this is the late margin. The collagen is a from the late margin, but a star is close to the late margin because the collagen is within the tarsus. Our uh, star is in infections of the less follicle. That's why it is again. It is one of the important differentiating point with the star is a from the late margin. And on eversion, if we evert the eyelid, you can see over here there is the eulish granulomatous lesions. It is more prominent posteriorly. Why? Because it is the inflammation of the mammalian gland and the locations of the mammalian gland on the tarsus. And tarsus is the posterior structure of the eyelid. First skin, then subcutaneous tissue, then muscle layer, then submuscular, then fibrous, then tarsus. So it is a posterior layer. That's why it is on eversion. You will get, you will, it will be prominent, eulish granulomatous lesions. So these are the clinical features. It is a non-tender, form inconsistency, A from the late margin, and on eversion, you will get eulish granulomatous lesions. Next, what is the treatment? The treatment option we have, one is hot compression, but it is very remote possibility for a spontaneous resolution of the collagen, uh, unlike a strike. But it is a very remote possibility. Only treatment option is the best treatment option of the collagen. The best is a incision and keratis. Sometimes students, they do mistakes. They said excision. It, is, it will not be excision. It will be incision. It will be incision and keratis. And the third option we have, that is inject steroid, long extending steroid, the triamcelonone acetonide, 0.5 to 1 within the lesion. That is called intralesional asteroid. And the indication of this intralesional asteroid, when the collagen is located close to the puncta, close to the punctum here, because puncta is a very valuable structure. Why? By, by giving incision close to the puncta, if you damage the puncta, you will damage the outflow pathway of the tear denis pathway. That's why to avoid incision, you can give, you can try with the interlational asteroid. But usually we do the actually incision and keratis. And in case of recurrent collagen, you should do investigate by biopsy to exclude mammalian gland carcinoma. But among this all, if you say only what is the treatment of collagen, incision and keratis, your answer is 100% correct. And now it is also very important what is the steps of incision and yeah, incision and curatis? First, anesthesia. We use topical and infiltrating anesthesia. And as I mentioned earlier also, then you will be asked in which space you will inject the anesthetic agents in the submuscular space. Then you will be asked why in the submuscular space? Because the nerve flexes are remain within the submuscular space. Then you have to ap apply collagen clamp. This is a collagen clamp. And this is a collagen scoop. So this collagen clamp and collagen scoop, it is very commonly you will get in the OSPI. Very common, very common. And the purpose of this collagen clamp is the location, fixation, and hemostasis. But though it has three functions, location, fixation, and hemostasis, if you asked among these three, which one is the most important? That is the hemostasis. And this hemostasis is done by this scope. So you can locate the collagen with your thumb and index finger, or you can fixate it also, but with the thumb and index, you cannot hemostasis. So to do hemostasis, you need collagen clamp. So in the question, you will get what is this collagen clamp? What are the parts of this collagen clamp? There are blade, two blade. That is called solid blade and that is called fenestrated blade. And the solid blade, it is placed towards the skin surface and it is towards the conjunctival surface. You see, this fenestrated towards the conjunctival. Otherwise, you cannot give the incision. If the solid blade uh, on the toe, the conjunctival surface, you cannot give incision. So, and what is the role of this screw? To make it tight. Why to make it tight? To do hemostasis, to arrest of bleeding. 
so this is and this is the scoop and after giving incision you have to curate this inflammatory materials with this scoop so anesthesia we give in the submuscular space and this is about the collagen clamp and the lipid evaded now the most important thing is the incision frequently you ask in the biba what type of incision you will give the type of incision is vertical incision you see we are giving vertical incision the next question why you are giving vertical incision why not horizontal incision as i mentioned earlier the collagen gland you see they are oriented vertically so if you give horizontal incision you will damage to the other mammalian duct so vertical incision is given to avoid damage to the other mammalian duct but if you give horizontal incision there will be lot of damage to the other mammalian duct and second thing through which surface you will give the incision you will give incision through the skin or through the conjunctiva so you will answer i will give incision through the conjunctival surface then you will be asked why through the conjunctival because you see is it to approach eh? why not skin why not skin because it is difficult to approach and difficult to approach means ki you see the collagen occurs higher it is the inflammation of the mammalian gland location of the mammalian gland within the tarsus tarsus is the posterior structure to reach tarsus if you go through the incision through the skin you have to cut the skin subcutaneous tissue muscle layer some muscular layer then you will reach tarsus but if you go through the conjunctiva just if you cut the conjunctiva then you will get the tarsus so if you go through the conjunctiva you just cut the conjunctiva after one layer you are getting the tarsus but if you go through the skin you have to cut four layers that's why we don't go through the skin but yes sometimes we have to go through the skin incision when if the collagen is remain untreated it's gradually extends towards the skin it bursts into the skin in that case you have to go through the skin and if you give incision in the skin then you will be asked then the incision will be horizontal so if you ask in the biba if you go through the skin when you go through the skin when the collagen extends towards the skin and if you give incision in the skin then the type of incision will be horizontal because the orbicular soculi are oriented horizontally so in that case if you give vertical there will be damage to the muscle fibers so in case of skin you have to give horizontal incision and if you go through the conjunctiva you give vertical incision but most commonly we give through the conjunctiva surface skin we avoid because another that is the if you give incision in the skin there is a possibility of formation of skin scar which is not cosmetically acceptable because eye is the most beautiful organs in our body after giving incision with the collagen scope you can curate the materials then clamp is removed after giving pressure bandages you gain antibiotic eye drops and ointment so this is the treatment now if you remain if the collagen remain untreated what are the complications of the collagen one is astigmatism and what is astigmatism normally you see our cornea is very unique its vertical curvature and horizontal curvature are almost equal but if one curvature is more steep or more flat in that case it is called unequal curvature of the cornea if the curvature or shape of the cornea becomes unequal then for one object two images will be formed at the level of retina normally for one object one image is formed at the level of retina but if the corneal curvature is unequal or unequal in shape then for one object two images form at the level of retina and that is called astigmatism if for one object two images form the image quality will not be good and if the image quality is not good there will be blurring of vision so that's why why this astigmatism because you see this collagen is presses of the cornea so the cornea surface will become unequal and second thing mechanical ptosis what is ptosis drooping of the upper eyelids 
and uh, you see the upper eyelids drooping. Why drooping? Due to the collagen, the weight of the upper eyelids is increased. And that increased weight of the upper eyelids causes drooping of the upper eyelids and that is called mechanical ptosis. And then burst through the skin, as I mentioned, if it is remain untreated, gradually it can proceed towards the skin and it can burst. And very remote possibility is there, mammalian gland carcinoma. Then come to the internal hot dilemma. What is internal hot dilemma? And it is also called infected collagen. Too easy to understand. Collagen occurs. Why collagen occurs? Due to the obstruction of the mammalian gland ducts. After collagen, by any how, if this collagen become infected by staphylococcus, if this collagen infected by staphylococcus, and that is called internal hordeola or infected collagen. Collagen, if the collagen get infected by the staphylococcus, it is called internal hordeola. So, by definition, it is the acute staphylococcal infection of the mammalian gland. It is the acute staphylococcal infection of the collagen. So, the clinical features, if you compare with the collagen, here collagen is the chronic, here it is the acute condition. So, as collagen was chronic, that's why it was painless. But it is acute condition, so it is a, it will be tender, it will be painful. In the collagen, the overlying skin was healthy because it is a chronic inflammation. As it is a acute acetylococcal infection, you can see over here, the skin is inflamed. Overlying skin is inflamed. It is red. It is erythematous because it is an acute acetylococcal infection. The other features are same as collagen. Collagen was formed in constancy. It is also formed in constancy. Collagen also AO to the lead, AO from the lead margin. It is also AO from the lead margin. And as it is a acetylococcal infections of the collagen, you will get some pass point as you can see over here. So the difference between the Collagen and infected collagen is simply collagen is a chronic inflammation and infected collagen is a acute infection and it is caused by staphylococcus. It is caused by staphylococcus. And the treatment is a hot compression. And secondly, as it is acute infections of the staphylococcal, any acute staphylococcal infection or acute bacterial infections, we need to give systemic antibiotic so you have to give systemic antibiotic and topical antibiotic and as it is a painful condition you have to give systemic painkiller so next come to the style and it is also called external hot deolum it is very common you have to know a style and in, one thing you have to remember in the viva when the teachers always try to make you pass and when you cannot answer any question, they will try their level best to make you pass. In that case, they will ask you about the astri and collagen. If you cannot answer the astri and collagen, certainly you can think you cannot, they cannot make you pass. So that's why without knowing astri and collagen, you should not go to the examine hall. So what is astri? It is an acute Estephalococcal infection of the last follicle. You see, the internal hot deolum chiloki, acute estephalococcal infection of the collagen. But if there is a estephalococcal infection in the last follicle, then it is called star. So, what are the clinical features? Again, you see, just remember it is acute condition. So, it will tender, it will be painful. And overlying skin, here you see, it is inflamed. Why? because it is acute conditions. It is acute inflammatory conditions. And soft in consistency. Why? Because it is acute estival cocaine infection. So there is abscess is formed. Any abscess, soft in consistency. Then it is close to the lead margin because as I mentioned, it is estival cocal infection, the less follicle. So it is a close to lead margin. So this is the difference between the collagen and sty. Frequently you will get this question in the Bible or in the written. The First, your definition. In the definition, you will write the collagen is the chronic inflammation of the mammalian gland, and esta is the acute infections of the lash follicle. Then, collagen is painless, and esta is painful. Collagen overlying skin is healthy, in the esta overlying skin is inflamed. 
collagen hard in consistency or firm in consistency it is soft in consistency because it is abscess collagen a from the lead margin it is close to the lead margins so these are the difference you have to remember in the practical also in the practically also suppose there is a lead you just simply ask the patient it is a painful or painless if you say it is a painless definitely it is collagen if it is painful either it is collagen infected collagen or it is a scar if it is close to the lead margin it is a scar a from the lead margin it is infected collagen and if you cannot differentiate is close to or a from the lead margin but the treatment is same internal hot dialum and a scar the treatment is same because it is a acute condition we know the acute condition you have to put systemic antibiotic once the patient gets systemic antibiotic the the disease will be cured so it is a very simple way you can treat so the treatment of sti is the most of the cases it is the self limiting and there is a it can improve spontaneously but as collagen there is a very least possibility but very remote possibility of spontaneous resolution but most of the cases of sti they undergo spontaneous resolutions and systemic antibiotics topical antibiotics you can give an ointment also to prevent infections or to spread the infection to the surrounding structures as it is a painful condition you have to give systemic pain and another option is epilation of the associated eyelash what is epilation just removal of removal of the eyelash if the remove the eyelash most of the time it will promote the spontaneous resolutions so these are the things very important and the complication of the sti is preceptor cellulitis what is preceptor cellulitis as i mentioned if the in any infective focus they confined within the septum that is called preceptor cellulitis but is if it extends beyond the if it extends beyond the septum if it is extend beyond the septum in their state infective focus will come into the orbit there will be active influence of orbital tissue that is called orbital cellulitis it is a very serious condition if the orbital tissue is involved you will get proptosis the ocular movement will be restricted the optic nerve will be involved and the infective focus through the optic optic canal will go to the brain will cause meningitis brain abscess cavernous sinus thrombosis and may lead to death also that's the orbital cellulitis is very emergency ocular emergency and serious conditions so this is about sti collagen and now come to the blepharitis what is blepharitis it is the inflammation of the eyelid margin usually it is subacute or chronic inflammation of the eyelid margin it is called blepharitis and anterior blepharitis there are there are three types one is anterior blepharitis one is posterior blepharitis and another is mixed so this is it is less important than sti collagen or uh, internal hot dialum but you have to know the sometimes if you get if you if you may ask what is blepharitis so anterior blepharitis means inflammation of the uh, outer lid margins and in the outer lid margin there is a eyelashes so it will affects the eyelash eyelash follicle and what are the causes of anterior blepharitis staphylococcal infections and seborrheic dermatitis and posterior blepharitis means if it involves the inner lid margins that is contact with the eyeball and in the inner lid margin we know there is a opening of the mammalian gland there are there are the gland orifices there so it is caused by the mammalian gland dysfunctions it is caused by the mammalian gland dysfunctions and mixed means both anterior posterior so it is very from the name you can appreciate anterior blepharitis posterior blepharitis and mixed anterior blepharitis caused by the staphylococcal infection and seborrheic dermatitis posterior blepharitis is caused by the mammalian gland dysfunction and acne rosacea and mixed and what are the clinical features it includes symptoms symptoms are all are same you will get burning sensation foreign body sensation and most important thing the in the usually get worse in the morning due to excessive build up of foreign bacteria over night so this is uh, clinically if you ask the patients at what time the symptoms are prominent in the morning then you can think it is the most likely blepharitis so burning sensation stringy sensation or formidable sensation in the eyes uh, there will be photophobia what is photophobia in tolerance line and that will excessive watering all these things are due to inflammation any inflammation 
you will get photophobia any inflammation there will be stimulation of ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve and that will cause us excessive watering uh, and itchy eyelids due to the irritation from inflammation or epidermis and casting scales all these things you will get in the blepharitis and the signs will vary according to the positive agents if it is estomalococcal blepharitis and seborrheic blepharitis you can differentiate from their clinical features in the estomalococcal blepharitis the eyelid margin will be edematous and erythematous you see erythema and edema of the eyelid margin you see this eyelid margin is inflamed is very inflamed and it is swollen and heart scales rusting and polaritis this is called heart scales and in estomalococcus the scales are around the base of the eyelids this is the most important differentiating point how we can clinically say it is estomalococcus it is around the base of the eyelids as a laser the eyelashes are matted ekta atta shonge lege ache this is called matted the eyelashes are matted and there is a polaritis a ring like formations around the and there is a telangiectasia the tiny blood vessels branching tiny blood vessels along the lid margin here it is not clearly visible but you can see here and you can see the tiny blood vessels is there and the eye the loss of eyelashes you can see the, here there is no eyelashes is there loss of eyelashes and also misdirected eyelashes when this eyelashes direction is changed acquired misdirection of eyelashes that is called trichiasis so you will get all these features of the stroke so the most important thing is here the scales the crusting they are around the base around the base but in case of seborrheic they are not around the base they are on the eyelash this is the most important differentiating point between the staphylococcal blepharitis and seborrheic blepharitis the most important differentiating point again i am telling between the staphylococcal and seborrheic the scales the crusting in staphylococcus around the base in case of seborrheics it is on the eyelash in the other features you see in the seborrheic erythema and edema are less common here i mentioned waxy scales and greasy casting on the on the lash not around the base of the eyelash on the lash and polarity is telangiectasia less common real loss of or missed ear in the seborrheic the loss of eyelash is rare misdirection of the eyelash rare so the differentiating point between the staphylococcal blepharitis and the seborrheic blepharitis the most important is heart scales in the staphylococcus it is the around the base and the sebor sorry in the staphylococcus around the base and in the seborrheic it is on the eyelashes and now posterior blepharitis it is easily we can diagnose it because if you look at the mammary gland orifice as i mentioned earlier in the you see posterior to the gray line there is a entry to the gray line i mentioned there is a eyelashes posterior to the gray line there is a opening of the mammary gland you see these mammary glands are inflamed there is a swollen there is a block capping of the mammary gland orifice so capping it is called capping of the mammary gland orifice with oil globules ha huh? oil globules and pouting or plugging of the gland orifice and if you express toothpaste like material will come out so this is the by looking at the lid margin easily you can diagnose it is a posterior blepharitis and in any posterior blepharitis the causative agent is mammary gland dysfunctions and the complications there are a lot of complications though there is no sight threatening but lot of complication is if it is chronic blepharitis it can cause lid scarring lid notching what is called tylosis trichiasis eh, due to misdirection eyelashes metalosis when there is a loss of eyelashes it is called eschent eyelashes metalosis polyosis loss of pigmentation othoba whitening of the eyelashes eyelash ta jon sada hoye jay tokhon eta ke bola hoy polyosis astai calagion calagion is more common in the posterior blepharitis and astai is more common in the staphylococcal infection so it is anterior blepharitis in all the cases you will get 
tear free instability that is dry eye flicknular conjunctivitis con as they causes corneal epithelial erosion corneal scarring and vascularization all these things can happens and the treatment main treatment is the lead hygiene so in the hygiene you have to maintain warm compress amra boli 5 minute kore kore dine dui tin bar gorom pani shek dewar jonno keno to soften the crust at the base of the eyelashes and you can give vertical eyelid masses to express the movement secretions and lid you have to keeps the lid keeps the lid cleaning with the uh, with the some warm water and shampoo and to be after cleaning you have to apply the topical antibiotic ointments at the lid margin and systemic antibiotic you can use in case of anterior blepharitis azithromycin in case of posterior blepharitis your choice will be either systemic do doxycycline or tetracycline and if there is inflammation we use the topical steroids for short times and as i mentioned in all cases there is a tear frame tear frame key there is a thin preconial tear frame which keep our cornea smooth and wet if there is a tear frame dysfunction your eye will be dry and there will be always burning sensation so you have to give artificial tear substitute now come to the trichiasis what is trichiasis eh? there is a misdirection of the eyelash as i mentioned eh, in the applied anatomy the directions of the eyelash in the upper eyelashes are upwards forwards and backwards and the lower is a downwards forwards and but here you can see they are inward misdirection so if there is the inward misdirection of the eyelashes that is called trichiasis and what are the consequence as you can see these eyelashes rubbing over the conjunctiva they are rubbing over the cornea so what will happens due to the rubbing constant rubbing of the cornea there will be epithelial erosion then ulceration then formation of the penis what is penis formation of vascular fibrous tissue so this is all the consequence are very serious consequence and congenital hyperemia so what are the causes one is congenital dystrachiasis uh, and what are the reason behind both mammalian gland and lash they are developed from a pilosebaceous unit uh, but this pilosebaceous they differentiate in the second month of gestation if they fail to differentiate ियसियस in the mammalian gland orifice that is called congenital dystrachiasis normally amra jeta jani anterior to the lid margin eyelash posterior to the lid margin opening of the mammalian gland shekhane kono eyelash thakar kotha na but if posterior to the lid margin instead of jekhane mammalian gland orifice thake shekhane jodi eyelash grow kore eyelash jodi shekhane grow kore tokhon shetake bola hoy congenital dystrachiasis it can happens in the acquired cause also suppose chronic blepharitis chemical injury ocular sacrificial pemphigoids steven johnson syndrome trachoma and trauma all these things so the treatment is epilation what is epilation just removal of eyelash with the forceps but the disadvantage of this procedure it can recurrent regrowth after 4 to 6 weeks ebong char theke soptah por jeta abar recurrent hobe it will be more short and stout it are shocked the heart so it is a it is not good procedure electrolysis what is electrolysis destruction of the lash follicle by passing electrical current through a fine needle under local anesthesia and the disadvantage of is it can cause a scarring of the lid and another option is laser thermal ablation it is a painless procedure anesthesia do not required and but on limited number of eyelash you can destroy cryotherapy also another option you can destroy large number of follicles 
with the minus 20 degree centigrade freezing but it is it can damage more and surgery there are some surgeries that i will not go in details all about this and what is entropium entropy is the inward rotation of the eyelids normally you see just eyelids they with touch of the eyeball if it is rotated inwards then it is called entropion and what are the consequent you see along with the eyelid there is a eyelashes are there so if the eyelid rotate inwards this eyelash will will cause a rubbing of the conjunctival surface and the corneal surface so you will get the consequence of phacosis there will be epithelial erosion ulceration and vascular tissue formation scarring all these things will be happens so the consequence of the atrobion and consequence of the trachea is same and what are the causes causes the involution of due to aging process due to aging process the lid structures the stability of the lid structures gradually become weak that's why is rotated inwards and some psychiatric disease so here the psychiatrization occurs inside the eyelid that is in the palpebral conjunctiva so it will contact and rotate the eyelids inwards so what are the psychiatric shear disease chemical injury psychiatric pemphigoids steven johnson syndrome trachoma and trauma if it occurs on the skin surface suppose this chemical injury on the skin surface so there is a contractions and that will contact will rotate the eyelids outwards that is called atrophion so that's why it is important contraction of scar tissue uh, scar tissue in the palpebral conjunctiva so if the psychiatrization in the inner layer then it is called entropy and it could spastic condition suppose blepharospasm blef what is blepharospasm forceful contractions of the eyelids bilateral forceful contractions of the eyelids rogi chailo chok tulte par hotat kore suddenly both the eyes become closed that is called blepharospasm or local irritations the inflammatory and traumatic conditions and some congenital atrophy also and the treatment is again the surgical corrections and in compared to the entropy you see atrophy and key outward solution the eyelids normally the eyelids should remain close to the eyeball but it is rotated outwards that is called uh, atrophy and as a result normally we know the tear is secreted from the lacrimal gland and they comes to the superolateral part of the conjunctiva then along with the upper lid margin along with the lower lid margin they comes to the inner canthus it is called tear legs then by the contractions of the orbicularis soculi they they shift it into the tear denus part of the sponge but if the eyelids moves away from the eyeball this tear cannot move along common cannot come into the in our canter so there will be overflowing of the tear that is called excessive watering and conjunctival keratinization due to dryness of the eye and what are the causes again involutional that is a canthal ligaments and orbicularis are weak that causes involution is due to aging process and psychiatric disease as i mentioned these psychiatric diseases can cause entropion these psychiatric diseases can cause atrophion these psychiatric if it occurs in the tarsal conjunctiva they will cause entropion if chemical injury burn lead trauma chronic infection occurs in the skin surface there is a contraction of the skin surface that will rotate the eyelids outwards so that is called atrophion and paralytic this is paralysis of the orbicular soculi and congenital cause so again the treatment is surgical and last the most important is a process it is very common for the biopsy so by far read the lead is very important you will get so many short note especially trichiasis entropy on atrophy on among this all the most important is the process process is very common what is stopping process drooping of the upper eyelids and as you know the opening of the eyelids is mediated by three muscles so closing of the eyelids mediated by only one muscles that is orbicularis oculi remember this acts in the biopsy closing of the eye is mediated by only one muscle and what is that orbicularis oculi and what is the nerve supply of the orbicularis oculi there is seven nerve seven nerve but opening is mediated by three muscles 
one is lps levator palpebral superiors and it is the main muscle to elevate the eyelids they can elevate about about 15 mm and the nerve supply is third clear nerve and molar muscle it is also called it is situated along the lid margin that is a non stated muscle they can elevate only 2 mm and it is supplied by sympathetic nerve and frontalis muscle they usually roll in case of extreme up gaze and that is supplied by seven nerve so you may get a mcq question the opening of the eye is mediated by third cranial nerve sympathetic nerve or seventh cranial nerve all these answer are correct along with they can add fifth or fourth some two so they are false so opening of the eye is mediated by three nerve third cranial nerve sympathetic nerve and seventh cranial nerve and the classifications are mild doses suppose only 2 mm dose suppose there is only molar muscle paralysis is molar muscle can elevate only 2 mm so if there is a paralysis of the molar muscles the molar muscle is supplied by sympathetic nerve if there, there is sympathetic paralysis there will be paralysis of the molar muscle if the molar muscle is paralysis the drooping only 2 mm so that is called mild dosis moderate dosis if it is 2 to 4 mm and severe dosis more than 4 mm and the, what are the causes myogenic dosis down congenital dosis in congenital dosis the muscular tissue is replaced by the fibrous tissue but fibrous tissue has no contraction capacity that's why they cannot contract so they cannot elevate the eyelid so that causes dosis and aquatosis aquat muscular dosis what are the cause myasthenia gravis all of you know about the myasthenia gravis ocular myopathy chronic in the ocular myopathy you will get chronic progressive external ophthalmoplegia and dystopia myoclonica and the neurological causes if third nerve paralysis and simple third nerve paralysis because the lps is supplied by the third nerve so if there is a third nerve paralysis along with the tosis the third nerve supply the other muscles superior rectus medial rectus inferior rectus so you will get the ocular movement restriction in some gauge at the same time the people will be dilated in the third nerve paralysis so in the third nerve paralysis the tosis is the third nerve paralysis associated with the tosis you will get associate the tosis you will get restrictions of the other ocular movements and the dilatation of the pupil and sympathetic paralysis as i mentioned earlier sympathetic they supply the molar muscle and molar muscle can elevate only the 2 mm so that will cause us paralysis so if there is a sympathetic paralysis that is called horner syndromes that is called horner syndrome and what are the features of horner syndrome sometimes you get short dot myosis because you see the pp it is the it is the the in the people around the people there is circular group of muscle that is called constrictor pupillae which is supplied by the parasympathetic nerve and from the edge of the people there is a dilated pupil which is supplied by the sympathetic nerve if the sympathetic is paralysis that means it will dilated pupil will be paralysis if the dilated pupil what is the function of the dilated pupil to dilate to dilate the pupil huh eh? so if the dilated pupil paralysis who will get upper hand the constrictor pupil will get upper hand and what is the functions of the constrictor pupil constriction so you will get myosis and mild dosis because they can elevate only 2 mm so there will be mild dosis and drooping of the upper eyelids elevations of the lower eyelids because molar muscles they remain along with the upper lid margin along with the lower lid margin also so that will call narrow palpebral vision normal palpebral vision is 10 mm and and hydrosis lack of sweating on the same cell so these are the features of neurological dosis so there are some aponeurotic dosis if there is defects in the lps aponeurosis that leads to decreased transmission of the force of muscle aponeurosis it occurs in case of surgical trauma or senility that means lps is there is a dehiscence or disinsertion in the lps aponeurosis the transmission the force of transmission cannot proceed that is called aponeurotic dosis and mechanical dosis due to increase to aid or scarring of the upper edge as i mentioned in the in case of suppose collagen if there is a collagen in the upper eyelid it is large one so the increase weight of the eyelids 
or there is any tumor in the upper arete suppose neurofibroma or capillary hemangioma that will increase the weight of the eyelids and that causes drooping of the eyelids and uh, that will call mechanical ptosis so the ptosis can be myogenic ptosis neurogenic ptosis then aponeurotic ptosis and mechanical ptosis and the treatment is removal of cause and surgical correction so with these things i would like to conclude today if and if you have any question you can let me know so is it okay mr omar farooq am i audible omar farooq hello so should i stop okay good night to everybody Yeah.